Well, we can begin. Um, I want to thank uh, Jakub Klepal, first of all, for giving me the honor of uh, moderating this concluding panel of the conference, and also really to thank him and his team for organizing an extraordinary event and bringing together a truly extraordinary collection of people from all over the world who are fighting, uh, fighting for freedom. Uh, President Fawenza and Natan Sharansky were not with us at the conference, so let me just highlight a couple of things. We had with us Maya Sandu, who is the Prime Minister of Moldova. She was here last year as a dissident and an opposition leader, and now she's Prime Minister. And her message to this conference was that democracy is a constant struggle, and she gave a brilliant address yesterday. Last night, we heard from Ilgar Mamadov, who is the chairman of the Republican Alternative Party in Azerbaijan. He too was six years in prison and now is out. And he came out of prison and was able to join us you know, because of international solidarity. And maybe he'll be back next year as the president or prime minister of uh, Azerbaijan. And we heard from uh, Tawakal Karman, who the Nobel laureate from uh, Yemen, uh, who spoke both at the opening and then uh, yesterday morning. And one of the things she said, and this is something that affects not only Yemen, but other countries around the world, that there is, in effect, a kind of authoritarian international in the world, consisting not just of the Gulf countries, but Russia, China, Iran, Turkey, countries that gather together to try to prevent democratic progress. This morning we heard from Patriarch Bartholomew of the Orthodox Church, who was the man responsible for making the historic decision to recognize the independence of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, which is an extraordinarily important event. He spoke about human rights and universal values, and he too focused centrally on the culture, what he called the culture of solidarity. We had a meeting just earlier today of the International Coalition for Democratic Renewal based upon the Prague Appeal for Democratic Renewal that was issued two and a half years ago, signed by hundreds of democratic intellectuals and activists. It's about the crisis of democracy and how to renew democracy. And at this meeting, we were graced by the presence of Cardinal Joseph Zen, who Martin Lee uh, the Cardinal from Hong Kong, who Martin Lee, the democracy leader in Hong Kong, called the moral voice of the people of Hong Kong. And we spoke a great deal at this international coalition. It's a group of networks, different networks working on different problems around the world, but really now we were focused on Hong Kong, which is, is such a central event for the future of democracy in the world. We all took a picture with standing with Hong Kong. And I'm gonna, at the conclusion of this meeting, um, we decided to, that this conference, we hope, will unanimously uh, issue a declaration on Hong Kong. And I'm gonna read the declaration at the end of the meeting and people will then have a chance to sign as you leave. And then finally, you know, we were, we were also uh, joined by Ivan Havel, Václav Havel's brother, and his presence, his very presence, just reminded us of the values of uh, solidarity and human responsibility for society that his brother, Václav Havel, uh, lived by. And Václav Havel, of course, created Forum 2000. And as somebody in whose steps and whose legacy we try to follow uh, today. We're so grateful to have Lech Wałęsa with us on the 30th anniversary of 1989. I might note that next month we're gonna have a big event in Washington with Lech Wałęsa and we're gonna honor him in the US Congress uh, for his contribution to the struggle for freedom and really for leading the movement that was responsible for 
bringing down communism. And of course, Natan Sharansky, who spent nine years in a KGB prison and in his own way did a great deal to undermine the legitimacy of the totalitarian system of the Soviet Union. And Glanis Changuchereri, who's my old friend, I came across, I met Glanis the first time in 2012 at a meeting of the World Movement for Democracy in Lima, Peru. And she gave a speech at that meeting and I said, wow, this is really somebody. And she talked about herself as a girl child, a girl child from the central Mashonaland province of uh, Zimbabwe, whose society says is not worth investing in. She's someone according to the church doctrine who has no right of choice and who should only be recognized as a subject of her husband. So, she also said, by the way, that democracy is not for the elite, but for the disadvantaged and the oppressed because it signals liberation, freedom, and dignity. So, Glanis, just start our discussion by telling us, how did you get from central Mashonaland province, the girl child from that province to where you are right now? How did it happen? Um, thank you, Carl, and thanks for the profound um, introduction as well. So I just started as a, a rebel. That's, 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 that was the beginning of my journey. I had to be a rebel in order for me to define who I am today. Um, like you clearly said, I grew up in a very poor family that's very conservative religiously, and so all the opportunities were closed around me. I wasn't expected to get an education and neither was I expected to be somebody who can sit in a podium where there are people and I was speaking publicly. Um, but I had to, to change all that by just being a rebellious girl child and really going against all those dictates around me. Uh, so yeah, I had to find my own way to fund my own education so that I became educated because the family couldn't invest me, in me. And then secondly, I you know, started to fight as well um, the oppressive, oppressive regime of Zimbabwe um, as a student. And through that, that's how I joined you know, the students' movement and became a student activist. And that time I was doing a degree, studying for a degree in business. I wanted to set up a business empire, but I changed course and decided to go full-blown uh, human rights activism and democracy activism. So that's, that's how I found myself where I am today. Well, it's an amazing, it's, in a way it's a, it's a miracle. Uh, and so is Natan. Uh, Natan, you're a Jew from Donetsk. Uh, you too, in a way, went from being an utterly marginalized position in the Soviet Union. It's a, it's a historic story, it's been told many times, but why did you do what you did? And when you did it, did you know that the system that you were challenging was as vulnerable as it ultimately proved to be? Okay, uh, so... Uh, but my life experience, I believe that every person in the world, really every person in the world, wants two basic things. One, to be free, that nobody will tell to this person what to think and what to say. And the other, to belong. To belong to something bigger than yourself. So freedom and identity. So I was deprived of both. I was born in the Soviet Union the biggest dictatorship in the world. I uh, was born in the city of Stalino, now Donetsk. Uh, probably there were like 50,000 Jews, half a million people, 50,000 Jews. I grew having nothing Jewish in my life. No holidays, no tradition, no synagogue, no book, nothing. No opportunity to know anything. But there was one Jewish thing, anti-Semitism, a lot of anti-Semitism. State anti-Semitism and street anti-Semitism. And at the same time, I, of course, I knew that we have no freedom. I know exactly when I became loyal Soviet citizen. I am five years old. Stalin dies. And my father explains to me, five years old, 
that it is very good for Jews and for everybody that Stalin died, but don't remember all your life that miracle happened in the moment of danger Stalin died, but don't say to anybody, do what everybody does. And I go back to kindergarten and I sing with all the children about the great son of all the people Stalin. And I'm crying with all the children. And I have no idea how the other children are crying, really crying, or they are crying like me because our father told us. That is typical life of double thinker under dictatorship. I started at the age of five and knowing all my young life that I don't have identity and I don't have uh, freedom of thought. And then when coming back to my identity, realizing that there is great history and great people that you want to be part of this, it gives you strength to start speaking what you think. And the moment you are really becoming free person to say what you think, then you hear feeling solidarity of the other people. That's how I start speaking about the rights of different religions and nationalities in Soviet Union. Now, the other question that you can ask, whether we knew what we are facing. Of course we knew that we are facing this dictatorship. But in 1969, 20 years before 1989, Andrea Marik, great dissident in Russia, wrote a book, If the Soviet Union Will Survive Until 1984. Of course, he got, was imprisoned for this. Of course, he was respected, but he was loved by every specialist in the Western world. Soviet Union is giant forever. What it means in 15 years, it will not exist. But then he explained what we all knew, that dictatorship is very weak from inside, that more and more people don't believe this ideology and becoming double thinkers, and that inevitably this uh, empire, if only the free world will stop supporting it, it will not have enough energy to keep the minds of the people under control and it will fall apart. We believed in it. When in, in prison we heard about solidarity from official Soviet Pravda, that was like the best proof that we are right, that people will not live under this dictatorship all their life. And of course, the, the rest of the history. <laughs> That's a pretty good introduction yeah. to Lech Wałęsa. Well, Lech, when you jumped over that fence, did you know what, that you might be setting in motion extremely momentous events? And, and why'd you do it? Szanowni Państwo, Ja jestem, jak wiecie, rewolucjonistą. Ladies and gentlemen, as you probably know, I am a revolutionary. A na życie patrzę w każdej dziedzinie praktycznie. But I am very practical in my views on life. I patrzę przede wszystkim przez Europę. And I take most of the time the European perspective on life. Mojemu pokoleniu w Europie Los wyznaczył dwa zadania. There were two tasks that uh, the fate had for my generation. Jedno zadanie usunąć podziały Europy, które hamują rozwój Europy. To remove all the divisions in Europe that actually prevent Europe from developing. Podziały na bloki, na kraje, na granice, na systemy. The divisions meaning blocks, systems, um, boundaries. Ale to, wymag to wynikało z, z rozwoju cywilizacji. W technologię w wielu dziedzinach opracowaliśmy taką, że nie mieściła się w naszych państwach. But that was partially due to the development of our civilization. The technologies we managed to develop were too big to actually fit into the national boundaries. A sy system komunistyczny hamował rozwój i zniesienia tych barier. And the communist system actually tried to prevent the process of removing those barriers, removing borders. Więc pierwsze zadanie naszemu pokoleniu w Europie, nawet w świecie, udało się. So we, masę, masę podziałów niedobrych wyrzuciliśmy. So we managed to fulfill and perform our task, the first task we were given by the fate, successfully. No more borders. A natychmiast tamtej 
epokę wpadliśmy w epokę intelektu i informacji globalizacji. But once this era was over, we entered immediately into the new era, into new times, times of information, uh, intellect ta and globalization. Ta epoka jest tak daleko inna, że musimy jak najszybciej w dyskusji zastanowić się, jak dalej rozwijać się po tym zwycięstwie. And now the times are so different that we have no time to spare, uh, but to think and discuss what next, what now. Pierwsze pytanie dla nas wszystkich. Jaki fundament po tej nowej budowli w Europie? And my first question is, what, or the first question we should ask ourselves is, what will be the foundation of the new Europe? Połowa Europy chce budować na wolności, wolnym rynku i prawie. Uh, half of Europe wants this foundation to be freedom, free market and law. Druga połowa mówi, nic nie zbudujecie. Najważniejsze są uzgodnijcie wartości i dopiero wolny rynek i prawo. Um, and the other half would be very discouraging about it, saying you will never build anything on this foundation. You have to come to an agreement, come to a consensus, and only later, once you have a um, consensus regarding values, you can build freedom, free market, and law, jak rule of law. Jak osiągniemy porozumienia co do fundamentu, będzie drugie pytanie. A jaki system ekonomiczny pod tą waszą nowość? Once we answer the question, uh, what is the foundation, what are the values that will lay the foundation for the new system of the new times, we have to think about what economic system we will apply. Na pewno nie komunizm, bo w żadnym państwie na świecie nie sprawdził się. It won't be communism because it uh, didn't work in any corner of the world. Ale na pewno też nie taki kapitalizm, jak dziś obowiązuje. But definitely we cannot apply capitalism in the way it looks today. Gospodarka wolnorynkowa, okej, okay, musi być. Of course I accept the fact that we have to have free market economy. Ale kapitalizm do końca XX wieku polegał na wyścigu szczurów. Każde państwo lepiej, szybciej, więcej zarobić. But when you think about capitalism, then till the end of the 20th century, it was based on a kind of rat race. Everybody was trying to earn as much as possible, produce as much as possible. Koniec tego, tego wyścigu, a więc połowę kapitalizmu przestaje istnieć. Now there is no more rat race, so we actually cancelled half of the capitalism. Najkrócej, epoka podziałów upadła, pojawiła się nowa epoka, a my jesteśmy dzisiaj po środku. So in a nutshell, we managed to remove all the divisions, there are no more divisions, we are facing new era, new times, and we are somehow stuck in the middle. I ta epoka po środku nazywa się epoka słowa. Najpierw jest słowo, a słowo jutro ciałem się stanie. And I like to call this transient period the era of the word. Today we only talk, today it is the word that will become flashed, flesh tomorrow. Prawie wszyscy widzą nową epokę, a przeszkadza nam w budowaniu przeszłości. So everybody agrees that we are now facing new era, new times, but we have this burden of the past that somehow impedes our progress. Doprowadziliśmy do wielu krzywd i nierównowagi rozwoju i to nam przeszkadza budować większe struktury. Because of what we did in the past, the development wasn't equal and this prevents us from building new structures. A więc dzisiaj wszędzie, gdzie to możliwe, dyskutujmy, jak ma wyglądać przyszłość nasza. So today, what we need to do and what we have to do is talk, talk, talk about the future, what we need to do for the future. Z Europy wyszły dwie wojny światowe, rewolucje, wiele rewolucji, a dziś zniosimy granice. And when you think about Europe, this is where the two world wars originated, this is where the revolutions originated. And now look at Europe, there are no borders. Wprowadziliśmy euro. <coughs> We have new common currency, euro. Każdy obywatel może pracować w każdym państwie Europy. Any citizen is free to travel around Europe to work wherever, whenever they want. To jest przyszłość świata. And this is the future of the world. Oczywiście w innych miejscach jeszcze są większe podziały, większe krzywdy. Of course there are corners of the world where the divisions still exist and there are huge inequalities. Ale rozwój cywilizacji wymusza na nas, byśmy budowali większe struktury, porozumienia i lepsze systemy. But the development of the civilization forces us to build bigger and bigger structures to find better and better systems. Ale to jest na dłuższą rozmowę 
A dzisiaj nie mamy chyba tyle czasu. But I don't think we have enough time to cover this subject. Can you see? He we don't have enough time to cover this subject today, I'm afraid. Okay. It's okay. a longer story. You know, I, I've been instructed by Jakub that we want to talk about how to recover the spirit of 89. We know democracy is in trouble in many ways, and in many different ways democracy is in trouble. I mean, the Prague Appeal spoke about resurgent authoritarianism, but also talked about populism and all the... Our fight had a very simple philosophy and rationale. And we need to reapply it. And the philosophy was this. If something is too heavy to lift, you should invite somebody to help you out to lift it. Wtedy ciężar był wielki, Związek Sowiecki, komunizm. And the burden was really huge. There was the communism, there was the Soviet Union. Trzeba zorganizować było całą Polskę. So we had to organize, activate the entire Poland. Za mało, doprosić Europę. It was still not enough. We had to ask Europe for help. Za mało, doprosić globalnie Stany, Japonię, Kanadę. It was still not enough. We had to invite the US, Canada, Japan to help us out. I tym prostym sposobem solidarnie wyrzuciliśmy ten okropny system. And this solidarity, global solidarity helped us get rid of the system. Dziś też jest potrzeba solidarności. And today we also need this spirit of solidarity. Tylko trudno ją zbudować. But it's very difficult to build. Bo w tamtym czasie wszyscy mieliśmy wspólny mianownik. And there was a common denominator that we shared at that time. Komunizm Związek Sowiecki. That was the communism and the Soviet Union. W liczniku mieliśmy każdy inny, inny interes. And we held different interests. Ale jak rozbiliśmy Związek Sowiecki, straciliśmy wspólny mianownik. But we lost this common denominator the moment the Soviet Union was dissolved. Jak znaleźć wspólny mianownik dla nas wszystkich? So now we need to search for this new common denominator. Żebyśmy mogli podobnie walczyć z tymi wszystkimi krzywdami, jakie jeszcze są w świecie. So that we can use this solidarity, this spirit that we had then to fight inequalities and divisions that are still present in some parts of the world. Trzeba by jak najszybciej zrobić listę tematów, które nie mieszczą się w państwach i one muszą być kontynentalne. We have to make sort of a list, an index of issues and topics that are too large for, to, to be solved on a country level but the topics that need to be solved globally. A jakie tematy muszą być jak najszybciej globalne? We have to make these themes and these motives uh, global as na soon przykład, as possible. Na przykład ekologia. For example, environment, ecology. To jest temat globalny. This is a global issue. Ale kto ustawi tą listę? Bo jak ustawimy listę, to potem zastanowimy się, jak to realizować. But first we need to create this to-do list and only later think how to implemented and what to do about it. Najprostsza metoda, solidarność. But solidarity is the clearest and the easiest answer do here. You have different burdens, different uh, heavy things to lift, and you have to be, uh, have this solidarity spirit, people helping you out with it. All right, well, okay. the question is, how do we do it? I would get a new Nobel Prize if I had the answer for you. Can you, you. say that again? <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I'm going to come back to this, but, you know, Glennis, you're in a country that was ruled for 37 years by Robert Mugabe, a dictator, and now he's gone, and you got another dictator, Menangagwa. Menangagwa. Correct. How can you make forward progress? And I take it you need solidarity, too. I think he set the foundation pretty well um, by acknowledging that 1989 happened at a time when there was a common denominator in terms of what the world needed. And this denominator was even shared with the global south. You know, it happened at a time when freedom was the moment. That's what the, whole, the rest of the world needed. And in the global south, we had countries like Zimbabwe that had just won their independence. And we also had countries like South Africa that were nearing their freedom. And so that became the basis upon which democracy became a thriving idea because everybody wanted liberalism. Everybody wanted freedom. 
So there was a common denominator. So even for these post-colonial states, and South Africa, which was yet to be a, freedom, a, a free country, what they needed was to see democracy thriving, despite the fact that we were even supported by communist states to fight you know, colonialism. There was no dispute around yeah. what we needed. And fast forward um, three decades later to today, the context has changed. We no longer have the de common denominator we no longer have the foundation upon which we can articulate our, our vision. I'm speaking to this in terms of the nation states, because these are nationalist governments that knew at that time that they needed freedom, that their pre people desired freedom, they desired prosperity. But now the nation states have sold out. They've sold out the people's vision. They've sold out the idea of democracy. And even if we go to the global north, that template which drove 1989 to say freedom is possible. Look at the Americas, look at Europe. That is no longer there. And the question he is raising is very fundamental for, to me, to say how then do we transgress from where we are now to the future which we so much desire, a future where we still want to see freedom, but there's no common denominator for us to have solidarity around us. And for me as a community organizer, the power and the vision and the idea lies with the people, ourselves as activists in different sectors that support us outside the nation states, where we need to go back to the very fundamental idea of what is it that we have that is shared and how do we get there. That is where we are going to be able to redefine democracy according to the moment in which we live in and also how we can move into the future. So for me, it's very, very important, Carl, for us to go back to the drawing board and say, what are the core democratic values that we needed to see in 1989 that we still so much desire to today? And how do we move to that space where we're able to claim them? You know, if you come back to Africa, the assumption and the narrative created by the dictators is democracy is a Western formation. You know, this is something that is imposed onto the continent by the Western world. But that is not true. Our own Ubuntu philosophy that Desmond Tutu preached so much, I am because you are, is in itself all-encompassing of all the democratic tenets, values, and principles. But our nation states, through our dictatorships, you have moved away from that philosophy to create a new phenomenon around democracy. So we need to go back and reclaim what democracy is, what it means to our people, and how we as activists, as movements, can repackage, you know, reframe democracy and sell it in a way that is more palatable to our people. Because for Zimbabwe, really, democracy is not sellable today. There has been a fast track, you know, regression from democracy to authoritarianism because people are not seeing democracy as it was articulated in the 1980 vision of Zimbabwe, in the 1980 vision in the Europe, and also in the 1994 vision in South Africa. It's, it's no longer seen like that. So we need to redefine it. It has been captured. Okay. Okay. The dictators are using our language, they're using our tools. Okay. We need to go, go back as a new generation and redefine, reclaim right. those values, that yeah. identity. We need to redefine, but okay. it's, it's, Render it's, each other solidarity and move forward. Okay. It's not simple. Uh, okay. Natan, yeah. you're a complex person. Yeah. You're not a simple guy, and I think you also feel you're a little bit unusual. Uh, you were both a dissident and a refusenik. Yeah. You were with Sakharov, but you're also with the Soviet dissident, the Russian uh, Jewish, Jewish movement. You were, in a way, you were both a universalist and a particularist. I mean, and does it have to be does it have to include both? Because it's complex. Can you do it? Can you just be a universalist? And how do we bring these two ideas together of universalism and particularism? Yeah, well, uh, it's true that many people were telling me already in the Soviet Union or later that I have to choose. Or you are for your Jewish people or you are for universal values. And I always felt that it's nonsense. That from where you're getting strength, to speak the truth from your identity, from your roots, from your desire to belong to some culture, to some history, to some people, that you are deprived of this. But the moment you get the strength 
Of course, you want to speak your mind freely and you want to express your solidarity with others who want to speak their mind freely. That's why I was one of the founding members of Helsinki Group. We were working together with Ukrainians and with Lithuanians and with Muslims in Crimea and many other oppressed nations. And it was one struggle. But what was the base of solidarity? And here I want to, like, to try to connect the problem or the challenges of our two speakers. Our problem then was that the free world, not we, the free world didn't believe that it is possible that there will be democracy in the former Soviet Union. Because they were saying, you have, what to do? Democracy is invention of the Western mind. It's not for Russians, it's not for Ukrainians, it's not for Uzbekans, it's definitely not for Muslims, it's definitely not for Japanese, it was said before, and of course it's not for Africans. You cannot impose these values of the Western mind on the others. As a result, they were ready to accept Soviet Union as it is. We dissidents believed, and now I think we have so many proofs based for optimism. We believe that nobody in the world wants to live in this stage of double thing, when he has to say one thing, but to believe in the other thing. And that's why sooner or later, the revolution is coming when few people and then more people and then more people are crossing this line between double sink and descent. And if you look what happened in Eastern Europe, and then if you look what happened with so-called Arab Spring, why people were going to Tahir Square, they were writing, they were describing how it's enough for us to be afraid. If you read what today is happening in Hong Kong, we are speaking about probably in the lectures, but simply by hearing interviews of the people from the square, they said, we are tired to be afraid, we want to speak our mind. And that is universal. That's universal for Africa, for Muslim countries, and for Russia. The problem is that the West has to believe that that is universal and to be ready to connect their policy with every country in the free world, uh, in the non-free world, with the question of uh, freedom and human rights. Well, why, why has democracy been backsliding in the recent past? I mean, you wrote this book in 2005, The Case for Democracy, George Bush embraced it, it looked like everything was moving forward. All of a yeah. sudden, things turned then, around. Why? Uh, in the same book, I was writing about mistake of many leaders in the world who believe that the moment there are elections, like some uh, another dictator, there, there's democracy. Democracy is free elections and free society. And free society is building institutions of free society. Uh, and it's a long process. And if there is no tradition, it will be longer and more difficult. And that's why uh, Arab Spring didn't finish with all these democracies and we have what we have in uh, Syria and in, the, in Egypt. But the important conclusion from those revolutions must be that people will never be forever under dictators. Sooner or later, Sisi has to know today that sooner or later he will fall. And not, by the way, his policy in some aspects is very good for us, for, but the fact that he's putting every dissident in prison, it means that he will, very soon he will fall. And if that is the message, then after this, after the fact that the dictator falls, I, I remember the times when your previous dictator was believed to be a big revolutionary and some uh, Democrats in the free world were fighting for him. It's, if it is coming of one dictator instead of the other, instead of building institutions of free society, nothing will happen. That's why, how you call yourself, community, community organizer, you have the most important role. <laughs> Okay. Two comments on democracy. There are three elements of democracy. to democracy. The first one is the law and the constitution, and it can be good or bad. That's 30% of democracy. The second 30%, the second third of democracy is the participation of people, whether people actually make use of the law and use the law. And the final 30% is how 
fat your checkbook is jeśli globally? Chcemy, jeśli chcemy How budować, much money you have? Jeśli chcemy oh. budować i poprawić demokrację, to popatrzmy, który element. And if we want to uh, amend and modify and help democracy, we have to first diagnose which of these three elements is missing or is in a bad condition. I druga uwaga, dzisiejsza demokracja przeżywa kryzys. And my second comment is that uh, unarguably uh, today democracy in a, is in a state of crisis. 20 lat mówiłem o tym kryzysie, który teraz następuje. Uh, I've been uh, talking about this crisis for the past 20 years. W demokracji większość, większość ma, wygrywa. Uh, in democracies, majority wins. A dziś większość nie idzie na głosowania. To gdzie jest demokracja? And today the majority of the society will not go to throw the ballot. So where is democracy? They za, don't go to vote. Za 10, 20 lat będą chodzić tylko na wybory ci, co mają być wybrani, a reszta ludzi nie będzie chodzić. So in 10 or 20 years time we will have the situation when only the people who are actually uh, running for uh, uh, the posts will be the ones who are actually going to vote for themselves. Coraz gorszych będziemy wybierać, bo, bo coraz mniej ludzi będzie wybierać. Worse and worse people will be elected because less and less people will come to throw the ballot. Apeluję, musimy poprawić zorganizowanie społeczeństwa. So I urge you, what we need to do is to organize the society better. Stare partie to wszystko nie nadaje się na te czasy. Old Parties, all partisan systems do not apply to the current reality. 20 lat temu mówiłem, jak ja widzę wszystkie państwa. I remember when 20 years ago I said, what was my idea, what I thought about the countries Pierwszy worldwide. Pierwszy podział, lewica, prawica, w każdym państwie. The first division I saw was left wing and right wing. It was co, present in every single state. Co wtedy rozumiałem przez lewicę? And how I understood the left wing then? Nie wierzę w żadnego Pana Boga. The left will say, I don't believe in any God. Jak najwięcej organizacji państwowych. And there should be as many as possible, uh, as many state organizations as possible. Co rozumiałem przez prawicę? And the, the right wing for me. Wierzę w mojego Boga. I believe in my God. Jak najwięcej prywatnych, organizacji prywatnych. And there should be as many private organizations as possible. Pierwszy podział. So that Cały was the świat. first division applicable Drugi worldwide. Drugi podział. Ludzie najemnej pracy. Zorganizować ludzi najemnej pracy. And the second division was about employees. Lewica, prawica. Again, the left and the right wing division. Zorganizować właścicieli środków produkcji, prywatnych, państwowych. To organize businesses, private and public businesses. Cztery partie mamy polityczne. We have four political parties. Każdy z nas nie należy do partii, nie chodzi na zebrania, ale wie, w którym miejscu jest. Nobody here goes to, uh, to vote, belongs to any party. Nevertheless, they know in which part of the spectrum they are, where they belong. I wie na kogo głosować. They know whom to vote. W telefonie wystarczy włączyć możliwość głosowania i 99,9 głosuje. It's enough to have a voting application for elections and then you will have a 99.9 .9 people going to throw the ballot. Los naszemu pokoleniu dał konieczność poprawki prawie wszystkiego, z czym mamy do, mieliśmy do czynienia do tej pory. And the fate gives us, our generation, this huge task to amend practically everything that was the status quo for us. W epoce słowa musimy wydyskutować. Pan musi, musi przekonać, a ja pada. And in the times of the word, as I mentioned, we have to talk about these issues. We have to discuss them. Bo nikt nikomu nie wierzy, bo tamta epoka była taka brudna. The previous era was really dirty, so there is a huge crisis of uh, confidence and of trust. A więc wszędzie dyskutujcie. So you need to discuss issues. You need to talk about these issues. Abyśmy, abyśmy doszli do podobnych po, po przemyśleń i rozwiązań. So that we come to a consensus, so that we come up with a common solution. Kiedy kiedy walczyłem z komuną, nikt nie dawał mi szansy. Tak, tak jak pani mówi, jak pani nie da rady. When I remember, when I started my fight against communism, nobody believed in me. Everybody said, it can't be done. Mówiono mi tylko, wojna atomowa może zmienić ten świat. As you said, everybody would say that only nuclear conflict will save the world. Zmieniliśmy? But we did it. I te problemy nie są, to są mniejsze problemy, to so, co pani ma i wokół. These problems that you refer to, these are problems that can be solved. Tylko wyciągnijmy wnioski z naszej mądrej walki, a reszta będzie załatwiona. You have to draw conclusions from the fight we won and then move on. Oczywiście niejednego dnia. 
course it won't happen overnight. To trzeba zbudować. It needs some diligent work. Przez 20 lat szukałem chętnych do walki z komuną. It took me 20 years to find people, find people willing to fight communism with me. 10 ludzi mi się dało zwerbować. And whenever I started my campaign, there would only be 10 people willing to join me. A kiedy Polak został papieżem, przez rok miałem 10 milionów. But then it took only one Polish pope to get me 10 million souls to support me. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. He was a good pope. Yeah. Yeah. Zaraz, zaraz. To może, to mogą być różne inne przypadki. Well, you don't have, you don't always need a pope. To nie papież zrobił rewolucję. He was not the one who did the revolution. Papież tylko do modlitwy nas zaprosił, my zobaczyliśmy, jak nas dużo jest. He was, all he did was invite us to a common prayer, and suddenly we saw how many of us there were. I takie małe organizacje jak pani przejęły te zorganizowanie modlitewne poprowadziło do boju. So in, in, even though we had small organizations like the ones you were referring to grassroots organizations then once we saw the amount of people enormous crowd that there was for the common prayer we sort of absorbed this crowd and used it to fight. I tu w każdym momencie coś takiego się może zdarzyć. Oczywiście nie mówię o papieżu, ale coś innego podobnego. And this can happen any time. You never know. You don't need to have your own pope to do that, but something might come up. Tylko trzeba podprowadzić pomysły i paru ludzi. You need to have an idea, a vision, and you have to Gladys, have a few good happen? people. Is it going to happen yeah. in Zimbabwe? Yes. It's definitely going to happen, um, Carl. It's only a matter of time, but I do see the hope, the energy in the young people, um, the self-organizing. I mean, it's happening, and the vision is clearly there. Um, it's really like re-equipping ourselves with the necessary tools, with the necessary language of the moment for us to win those proletariat who have been rendered classless because of the current system. So it's, it's quite possible. Okay. I want to get to questions, but before I do, I just want to... Uh, one, one other point, uh, Natan, back there we were talking about a different kind of left-right split. And you said something which I thought was very interesting and maybe you could just elaborate on it a little bit. We need more nationalists on the left and Democrats on the right. How do you bring this together? Well, uh, I believe that only going to the really basic desires of the people to be free and to belong. It's so easy in today's world, in our desire, uh, human rights for everybody, let's have Europe without borders, let's have the world without religion, everybody is the same. And then you find out that the people are more and more upset that all their national pride, like, is supposed to disappear. And to the contrary, we see today how postmodernism is met with new nationalism, when people also in Europe, and definitely in America and other places, say, what did you do with our national pride? Let's take away all these immigrants who are undermining our nationals. So in both cases, people speak something that really is painful for them. They do want to be free, and they do want to experience national pride. And you don't have to go to the extremes, to the contrary. You have to go uh, where these two directions mean, meet. And that's why I always say, also in my work in Israel, that, that we need more and more liberals on the right and more and more nationals on the left. And that's, that's what, how we can really meet and work together. That's wonderful. And I will get to the uh, questions, but just one more point for following on what you just said for Lech Wałęsa. I want to just talk briefly about Poland. I mean, we oh. talked about globalization, but I want to talk about Poland. <laughs> because Poland is a country, you know, that has suffered a great deal. Partitioned, <laughs> invaded, and yet it has always been for itself, but also for others. Uh, I remember in 1830, when you had a, a revolution in Poland, they came up with a slogan. <coughs> for our freedom and yours, for our common future. And they were talking about the Decemberists in Russia. They were supporting the revolution in Russia. And then here you are, leader of solidarity, and you made a revolution, but it wasn't just a revolution for Poland, but it was for Poland, but it was much larger. <coughs> Maybe you could just say a word to us 
about your country, about Poland, and why it has been able to play this kind of a historic role. Już mówiłem tu państwu, że oczekujemy nowych rozwiązań, bo stare nie pasują. As I said, we expect to have new solutions because the old solutions don't apply anymore. Masy społeczne chcą zmian i czują konieczność zmian. The crowd asks for the change, they feel the change is necessary. Politycy nie zdążyli przygotować pomysłu. Politicians didn't make it on time and didn't prepare solutions on time. Więc masy wybierają tych ludzi, którzy mówią, że będą zmieniać. This is why the crowd votes for those who promise them change. W Polsce doszli populiści demagodzy, którzy rozdają w tym populizmie wszystko, co się da i tym kupują masy. And in Poland, the elections were won by populists and demagogues who keep giving away candy and they can do anything with the crowd. A klimat jest dobry. And the environment is very favorable to them. W Polsce do Solidarności mieliśmy narzucone rządy, agentów różnych do rządzenia. Uh, in Solidarity times in Poland, there were all sorts of agents spread around from the outside, forcing their rule. I był podział, my i oni. And there was the division in the society, us and them. Teraz musimy zmienić te myślenie. And we have to have a shift in this mindset now. W Polsce przez wieki Kościół pełnił dobrą rolę, dobry patriotyzm. In Poland, we've witnessed for ages that the Catholic Church played a very important, crucial, good role in the society. Kościół do końca XX wieku był w zagrożeniu przez komunizm, przez różne dyktatury, więc wszystko ukrywał, żeby żeby nie uderzyć w niego. And till the late 20th century, the Catholic Church was under siege in Poland. It was endangered by all sorts of dictatorships, different systems, so it kept to itself. It was very protective. Now that the dictatorships are gone, we can do some cleaning in the Catholic Church, point to mist the mistakes the Church has made. In Poland, the crowds, masses believed in the Church, believed what the priests were saying. But now they say, politicians failed. Wałęsa zawiódł. Wałęsa failed. Kościół zawiódł. Catholic Church failed. Co tu wybierać? So there's nothing to choose from. U tego, że daje więcej. This is why they are very vulnerable to those who are giving away things for free. Jak długo to potrwa? The question is, how long will it Oto last? Oto jest pytanie. Oddaliśmy, demagogom, populistom oddaliśmy pole. So we've given the space, provided the space for the populists and for demagogues in Poland. I oni demagogie głoszą i, i wygrywają. And they preach uh, pop their populists' ideas and they win elections. Mnie się najbardziej podobają antyglobaliści. I really, really like antyglobalists. Gdzieś w jakimś państwie się spotykają. They meet in a country of their choice. Nagadają głupot, naubliżają nam. They say a few silly things, they really hurt our agenda. Idą na bok. Then they move to the side. Wyjmują telefon komórkowy i informują prasę, jak nam dołożyli reformatorom. And take out their mobile phones to share with the press, with media, that they taught us, okay. the reformers, the lesson. A oni powinni gołębiami się porównywać, a porozumiewać, a nie telefonem komórkowym. And if they're anti-globalist, they shouldn't use their mobile phones, they should use a pigeon. <laughs> Telefon to, to globalizacja. Because the mobile phone is the symbol of globalization. Więc nie powinni tego używać. So why are they using their mobile phones? A więc mamy argumenty, reformatorzy, porządni ludzie, myślący, mamy argumenty, tylko musimy zwalczyć tymi argumentami. So I think the arguments are on our side, on the side of the reformers, but we have to learn how to use them. Podważają Unię Europejską. They say that the European Union doesn't make any sense. A gdzie będziemy się porozumiewać? But well, will we find a common platform? Oczywiście, Unię trzeba reformować. Of course, the EU asks for a, a reform. I proponowałem już 20 lat Niemcom, Włochom i Francji. And for 20 years I've been talking about it uh, uh, and suggesting that Germany, Italy, Przygotujcie um, dwa rozwiązania. France should take a role here, prepare a solution, two, two-fold solution. Jedno na remontowanie Unii. One would be a sort of a renovation of the European Union, jeśli, remodeling. Jeśli da, reformować. And if not, then reforming it. 
a drugi przygotować, pozwolić Polsce w ogóle rozwalić Unię, pięć minut po rozwaleniu powołać nową. And the second solution would be to let the European Union collapse and five minutes later create a new one. I wszystkich zaprosić, w tym Polskę i, i Węgry, które rozwaliły Unię. And I think that Poland and Hungary could play that role that would collapse the European Union, but then the new European Union would have to include everyone, including and Poland and Hungary. We also, 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 and ten rights. Ustawić tak prawa obowiązki, żeby takie wygłupy nie miały miejsca. So you have to set up a sort of a framework for the obligations and the rights for the members so that uh, it we'll, makes more sense we'll the European you, Union. We'll let you find a solution to Brexit too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got that ball that you throw around. Where is it? The mic. Yeah. All right. Who? I can't see everybody, but who? You got it? All right, let's see who's going to get it. It's a prize, it's a prize. All right, come on, come on. Come up here so you can throw it. Is it somebody right here? Throw it, throw it. Yeah, but I, I raise the hand uh, first. So can I ask my questions? Oh, you're not throwing? <laughs> no. All right, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so uh, my questions are, good afternoon, everyone. My questions are for Mr. Bawensa. Dzień dobry, Pan Bawensa, poproszę mam de I do have two questions. Uh, I am from Nicaragua. And maybe you know that uh, the last year we had a failed dialogue in Nicaragua. So taking into account the history of the Solidarność and the round table negotiations in Poland and so on, what do you think about how effective could be the dialogues with authoritarian regimes, regimes such as in Nicaragua, that this regime has control over the electoral powers okay. and the other institutions? Okay, so, so how effective do you so think? So I wanted to solve Brexit and you wanted to solve Nicaragua? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Since I am from Nicaragua. You got an answer? Ja, ja miałem 10 niedobrych nie, nie rozmów, ale za 11 się udało. I failed to take 10 times, but the, the 11th time we sat down to have a conversation and dialogue, we succeeded. So you have to just keep going. Okay. I saw a hand up here. And there may be some, I'm not saying everything, but... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Throw it. Oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have two questions. Konstantin Agat from Russia, residing now in Vilna. So I have a question for Mr. Valencia and a question for Mr. Sharansky. A question to President Valencia is um, what do you think should the Russian Democrats do today in order to change Russia? And do you believe that it can be changed? Yeah. And for Mr. Sharansky, uh, when we all rejoiced at your liberation in the 80s, did you expect Russia to be as it is today? And what is your recipe? Thank you very much. Otóż, szanowny panie, Rosja się tak daleko zmieniła, że ja nie poznaję Rosję. Ale to jest za mało jak na dzisiejsze czasy. Um, I have to admit, uh, sir, that I believe that Russia changed as mu this much that I don't recognize this state anymore, but I don't think that the change was sufficient. To jeszcze potrwa. To, co robią dzisiaj demokraci, bardzo dobrze, tylko i mocniej, solidarniej. So I think that the Democrats should keep doing their, their work, that they're doing their job fine, but they need to be more, uh, act stronger and be more sol uh, have more solidarity. Russia is potrzebna całemu światu. To piękny kraj. Russia is a beautiful country, and the entire world needs Russia. A więc solidarnie pomóżmy Rosji wejść na drogę podobnego rozwoju jak my. So let's have a solidarity approach and try to help Russia to get on track of democratic change together, to, uh, on, on track okay. of progress. Solidarnie, solidarnie pomóżmy Rosji. Tam za dobre wynagradzajmy, za złe kasznie.
So we have to have this solidarity in our attitude to Russia and we have to praise them when they do good and uh, sort of um, not praise them when they do wrong. Uh, answering your question, when I was released, it was still it's Soviet Union. Union. In fact, Union. I was told in the airplane, which was flying to the Berlin where I was released, that I am deprived of Soviet citizenship for my bad behavior and sent away from Soviet Union. And then I made a statement on the airplane that I hope the day will come and the freedom will come to all the citizens of Soviet Union that came today to me. Did they believe in it? Of course they believed in it. I mean, of course we, in the, in the prison, we all was thinking how the Soviet Union will fall apart. By the way, we always believed that it will start from Eastern Europe and then it will come to Ukraine and when Ukraine become independent, it will be impossible to return. So more or less, uh, we continued fighting after I was released and more or less it happened. Now, did uh, we think that there will be a retreat? No, of course, we hoped that once you start building civil society, it will go from one tribe to the other. No doubt that today, and I believe the biggest problem is that the courts again are part of the government. They are not independent. Having said all this and criticizing, and just now while speaking here, I am writing another article for Washington Post criticizing for what's happening today in Russia. Having said all this, I say it's not what it was. And that's why when I'm saying, oh, it's all went back, then was the country where millions were in Gulag and millions were working for KGB. It's impossible. Even if somebody wants, it's impossible today, today in the free world. So we have to use what was reached. And no doubt, I agree about solidarity, but solidarity has to be first of all, to also, together with the leaders of the free world, who unfortunately today, the leaders of the free world, including leaders of America, this president and the previous president, they abandoned the principle of linkage between human rights and relations, international relations. And that's what we need to fight for. Uh, how, do we, how do we recover that, Natan? Huh? How do we recover that? Uh, how, America was a good example how it happened when Americans understood that that is in their own interest. I think that every day proves how much it is in the interest of the free world that their policy towards China and towards Russia will be connected to the question of human rights. And unfortunately, American leaders, not speaking about European leaders, but even American leaders, Democratic president and Republican president, made their policy free from human rights. You, you will not see it when it's coming to revolution in Iran or when it's coming to what's happening in Hong Kong. Uh, there is no linkage. Yeah. Okay. Um, they just gave me a sign. We have four minutes left. So uh, okay. let's try to move to wrapping up. I, I just want to, I want to get to the Hong Kong statement. Before yeah. I do, I want to just challenge you on one point. You said that CC is going to go down because he doesn't, he locks up all the dissidents. I believe that as a yeah. dictator. I know, but doesn't that, that say the same thing for, I want to get to China. Doesn't that say yeah. the same thing for Xi Jinping? Yeah, well, probably. Look, I'm not, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not such a big specialist on okay. China and Egypt because I'm now not living on the border with China as before in Gulag. But uh, I uh, believe that the biggest threat to the free world is that uh, totalitarian and uh, authoritarian regimes are now coordinating their activities. Exactly. And the free world is not coordinating their activities. That's the problem. Exactly. Um, where, by the way, in the audience is uh, Hang Dong Fang. Is he, any, is he here? Huh? Is he over there? By the way, like I just want you to know, that guy over there, sitting over there, is from China. And he was called in 1989 in Tiananmen Square, he was called the Lech Wałęsa of China. I just want to <laughs> note that. And he's still fighting for workers' rights in China, which is, uh, which is very important. Okay. We, we, met, we met before, and I think everyone felt that we really wanted a statement of solidarity uh, with the struggle that's taking place in... Uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, one of our important writers in the United States, George Will, said it's the most important thing that's happened in the world in the last decade. It's extremely important. And we wanted to have a statement coming out of this uh, conference. And I think 
Uh, Jakub, if I'm correct, you got people that people can sign. All right, you're, there, you're ready? I'm gonna just read the statement and then uh, we'll, we'll adjourn and, and people can sign because we really wanna have a statement with those young people, especially the young people, and with Cardinal Zen who is here, uh, that we stand in solidarity with uh, the people of Hong Kong. And it starts, we stand in solidarity with Hong Kong's fight for their freedoms and rights as the city has found itself engulfed by an unprecedented governance crisis. We urge the government of Hong Kong to meet the demands for democratic governance of Hong Kong, of Hong Kong people and respect their rights to defend the universal values of human rights and democracy which are enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We deplore the escalation of police brutality and arbitrary use of force against peaceful protesters, reporters, first aiders, and ordinary citizens of Hong Kong. We believe it is in China's interest to show the global community that it is not an enemy of open society and democracy. We believe it is the obligation of the government of Hong Kong to uphold electoral integrity for the ongoing district council election. They were threatening to cancel it. We are concerned that the government of Hong Kong has not ruled out or rejected calls by the pro-government parties to postpone or cancel the election. It has yet to address the widespread concerns about arbitrariness of the disqualification of prospective candidates. China has been using its business and political leverage worldwide, note the NBA, in an attempt to suppress the national discussion on the issue of China. It's attempted to boycott the NBA as they simply, that's our basketball association, by the way. It is not ruled as they simply exercise their own freedom of speech and supporting the people of Hong Kong. The International Coalition for Democratic Renewal stands with the freedom of speech worldwide and we condemn China's attempt to suppress such freedom worldwide. We are alarmed that President Xi Jinping has recently threatened, and he did this in Nepal just yesterday, that any attempt to split China will end in crushed bodies and shattered bones. This indicates that Beijing might not be trying to de-escalate the situation in Hong Kong and will continue to threaten Taiwan's democracy. It also makes me seem that Xi Jinping is a little bit nervous and losing it. We close by urging the international community to stand in solidarity with Hong Kong and support the people of Hong Kong in the face of an increasingly oppressive environment. Um, I hope that people will sign that. We will send that, we'll issue it globally, but also send it to our friends in Hong Kong uh, to let them know that they're not alone. That's the most important thing you can do when people are in a struggle like this, is to let them know they're not alone that we stand in solidarity. Lech Wałęsa, Nathan Chirosky, and Glanis Changutrary, thank you. Amen. 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 <laughs> you look great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, for those who would like to sign the statement, the statement is outside in the foyer. There are two tables. You are free to. And you